Let me say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to all of you, my brothers and my sisters. We greet you this blessed day in the name that is above every name. Amen. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we, we are grateful for Jesus because if it were not for Christ, we would not be here on today. And the only reason why we gather is because of what Christ did for us. Amen. On a hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life that we might have life. Amen. So we gather here on today to celebrate Jesus and let him know how much we appreciate how good he's been to us. Amen. Has the Lord been good to you? Amen. Has the Lord been good to you in virtual land? Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 146. Psalms 146 verse 1 says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Psalms 146 says we ought to praise the Lord if the Lord is your helper. Amen. If the Lord has helped you through anything, he says you ought to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 146 is a collection of psalms that runs from Psalms 146 to 150 and if you know your Bible like I know you do you know that's the last set of Psalms in the book of Psalms amen and at the end of the day what it tells us is is that no matter what's going on in your life you ought to praise the Lord amen let everything that have breath praise the Lord amen so we're praising no matter what's going on God is worthy of all of our praise amen so come on and join me in a word of prayer here on today God how we Thank you, and we praise you, for you are truly a good helper. God, you are our aid, you are our strength, you are our everything, you are our keeper, you are our confidant. God, we thank you for being all of that and then some. God, time does not allow us to attach all of the nouns and adjectives and verbs that you are. We just thank you that you are who you are, and we thank you that you're God and God all by yourself. We are reminded from Psalms 146 that we are to put our trust in you and nobody else because we can't put our trust in man because man is fickle and flawed and will let us down. We cannot put our faith even in government because governments rise and governments fall but we can put our faith in you who is our creator and our sustainer in you uh, there is no beginning and there is no end so we can trust in you because you are Mr. Reliable so we thank you for being God and for being God to us your children God we pray right now for the presence of your Holy Spirit fall fresh upon us in this sanctuary space bless also in our virtual space that we may encounter you in a real and tangible way here on today. We pray, God, that you will touch in such a way that we will be made better once we leave than what we were when we came in. We're looking for it. We're counting on it. And we're going to thank you in advance for it. It's in Jesus' blessed name. This day we pray. Let all of God's children say, Amen. Amen. Again, if you love the Lord this morning, say amen. 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 We got a couple of announcements to get to you. Then we move right into our worship here. Let me first of all begin by saying thank you, amen, to all of you here and all of you out there. Amen. Thank you for all the birthday cards and well wishes and gifts. Amen. I felt like a king on Monday. Amen. So thank you so very much. Again, I, I am really totally really grateful uh, for how, how you continue to show love to me, amen, as well as our family, amen. But again, thank you again for all of the cards, amen, all of the well wishes and all of the gifts. Just thank you so very much for blessing, um, for blessing me as part of my birthday uh, celebration, amen. I also want to remind you, don't forget to sign up for our Fit and Faithful Initiative, amen. I initiated with the University of Kentucky, amen. We're trying to uh, be a, a holy church, a hospitable church, a helping church and a healthy church. Amen. So we ask you to please, ma'am, please, sir, that, that program will kick off in January. Amen. Uh, but we need to get signed up today. Amen. As a way of helping to make better health choices, better uh, eating uh, habits, better eat ha eating habits. Amen. Better lifestyle. So we want to uh, partner with them. They are providing that ministry and several of you have signed up. We want to encourage others to sign up. If you have any questions about that, please contact the office. Amen. And we will get you in contact with uh, 
uh, Sister Monique, amen, Avery, or Sister Michelle Patton, who, is our, who are our liaisons and our leaders for the FABC Fit and Faithful Initiative. Amen. So again, please, ma'am, please, sir, we ask you to please consider uh, participating in that program. Uh, I promise you, your, your, your life will be made uh, the better. Amen. 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 Also, I want to announce, amen, coming this coming Tuesday, amen, uh, we'll be starting a Bible study series entitled The Controversies of COVID, A Biblical Perspective. Amen. Uh, there are still some, uh, so, so much controversy surrounding uh, COVID-19 and vaccinations and et cetera, amen. And uh, because of that, that's that, because of that, that's out there, the Lord has, uh, has challenged me or has laid it upon my heart to, amen, to, to speak to it, amen, uh, from a biblical perspective. How, what does the word of God say uh, when it pertains to what's right, what's wrong, what I should, what I shouldn't do? We want to see what the Bible has to say about it as we encourage others, amen. Uh, to, 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 to successfully deal with COVID-19, amen. So we, uh, we're looking forward to that, and we won't be doing it Zoom as we've been doing. Bible said there's a late. Uh, that information, I think, was so vital. We got information that was shared with us on this past Tuesday by Dr. Bashan J. Jonakin that blessed us with a COVID presentation. Um, I want to get the Bible study out via the same way, via live. So you'll be catching us live for Bible study on this coming week, um, the next, next three weeks. We'll do it live, so you'll be checking in just like you're doing worship right now, Facebook Live, 6 o'clock p.m. And then if you want to go into further dialogue, amen, we will do that as part of our Tuesday transformation session that we do as part of our FABC online group, amen. So if you're part of that group, you can join us. If you're not, we encourage you to join our FABC online group, and you'll join us for further discussions uh, after the Bible study lesson at 6. So 6 o'clock. Amen. Uh, the, the Bible study, 6 o'clock. Then we'll go into our uh, Facebook live group, 7 o'clock, for our Transformation Tuesday Bible study recap. Amen. Amen and amen. Last but not least, amen, we want to, you all know that uh, this coming December, this first, first of December, we have that slated to be our debt-free celebration Sunday. Amen. Uh, we've been working on getting debt free. We have, uh, we're almost there. Amen. Almost there. But we need your help to, 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 to get over the line. Amen. We want to, first of all, thank all of you who have been supporting. Amen. Uh, debt free giving on last year and then those who have continued that this year. Amen. Thank you so very much. Uh, but we, we've got one more push we really, really need to make in order to get to where we want to get to. And so what we're asking you to do, amen, for the month of or for uh, celebrating Thanksgiving, for the month of November, celebrating Thanksgiving. This is what we're uh, lovingly asking you for. Again, we thank you for how you continue to support, amen. We're asking you if you can keep on supporting, amen. Be, be, but again, do something a little bit extra. We want to celebrate Thanksgiving through giving, Amen. We want to celebrate Thanksgiving through giving. Amen. And we'll be asking each one of our members, amen, not just members, family and friends, if you're out there and you've been blessed by uh, this virtual ministry and this church has been blessing you, we invite you to help us, amen, that we might expand our ministries even further. We're asking everybody for at least a $100 Thanksgiving love offering uh, this year. Amen. We're asking each one, each person, amen, um, part of our membership, family and friends, a $100 Thanksgiving offering. Amen. And we believe, amen, if everybody who has been blessed, amen, by the ministry and want to bless us, uh, participates in this, we, we believe that we can um, make that final leg to get over the hump. Amen. So that we can end 2021 debt free. Amen. That will allow us the ability to, to expand in other areas of ministry. Amen. I don't know about you, but the world needs more Jesus. Amen. And so we want to equip ourselves with the ability to reach farther, but to do that, amen, we need to free up some resources to be able to do that. So if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. And again, you can give, amen, your checks like you normally do, or online through Givelify. There is a debt-free bucket on Givelify, so you can go through Givelify, our first African Baptist Church Givelify page, you can give that way as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. I look forward to how the Lord is going to bless as we move forward to celebrating our debt-free Sunday, prayerfully the first Sunday in December. If you love the Lord, say amen. 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 Come on, let us receive this praise team. Amen. As they uh, come and bless us. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Amen. <laughs> 
Let the church say amen.
him worthy of praise and so therefore we ought to give him all of our praise amen again you find that language in psalms 150 amen amen it says you ought to praise the lord amen uh, he is worthy amen he's worthy of all of our 
of our praise. Amen. Psalms 50 says that everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. When you read that particular psalm, that's, that's language in there that points to deliverance language. Amen. If you've been delivered from anything by the Lord, then the deliverer ought to be praised. Amen. And so the psalm that says, because we have been delivered, we will praise the Lord. Amen. God is worthy. Amen. Of all of our praise. Amen. And amen. So good to see all of you in our virtual space, all of you in our sanctuary space, and particularly good to see Sister Moore this morning. God bless you. Amen. As we Finalized her husband earlier this week, so please keep her lifted in your prayers. It's good to have her out and worshiping here on today. Amen. And so again, we thank uh, the Lord for how he keeps us in spite of. Amen. Uh, he keeps us in the midst of. So uh, we, 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 we definitely uh, want to lift the Lord and thank him for his keeping power. Amen. Thank you. If you enjoyed this praise team, let's give God some praise for them today. Thank you for blessing our hearts to our music ministry, to our AV ministry. Amen. To our hospitality ministry, those serving, helping us getting seated and safe, our deacons ministry uh, and all. Amen. Even our health ministry. Thank you so much for what you do week after week. Amen. To help us to be able uh, to provide this worship uh, opportunity. So Again, to God to be the glory. It's always good to have uh, partners in ministry. Amen. Uh, it takes all of us working together to do what we do uh, to the glory of the Lord's name. Amen. And amen. Here on today, we want to use today's sermonic presentation uh, as a... Uh, segue to the upcoming Bible study series. Amen. Uh, we want to use today's sermonic presentation as a way of leading us into that uh, Bible study series, again entitled The Controversies of COVID, A Biblical Perspective. Again, we want to use the Word of God to guide our uh, thinking as well as our conversations as it pertains to those things that may appear to be controversial uh, surrounding this uh, COVID uh, vaccination, amen, or masking, and all of that was tied to it. Uh, I believe the Word of God speaks to us in all situations. Uh, the Word of there is nothing that the Word of God does not address in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, and if you are a child of God, uh, then we ought to be able to consult the Word of God so that the Word of God can direct the child of God. Amen. If you don't know the Lord, then that's different. Amen. And that's a whole separate discussion. Uh, but, but for those of us who know the Lord, and I contend even for those who don't know the Lord, to me, uh, there are guiding principles for life whether you know the Lord or not. Amen. It's something about the God of creation that has wired creation in such a way that by his grace and his mercy, he still lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust, rain on the just and the unjust. So there are some principles pertaining to God that whether you acknowledge him or not, somehow still blesses you. And so I think we can take those and even use those, that perspective to inform discussions. Very familiar passage of scripture that we want to use today. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. But we're going to hang out with a portion of verse number 6. Amen. This is a very familiar passage of scripture. Most of us can quote John 14, 1 through 6. Amen. Uh, but we want to use this in a manner uh, to bless us as we set the stage uh, for our upcoming uh, Bible study series. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6 says, 
let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and where I go you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What is the truth? Amen. That appears to have been the question <laughs> for quite some time as it results or relates to COVID-19 and even the emergence of a vaccination. The question around much of it is, what is the truth? Here on this morning, I'm not going to argue what the truth is. I'm not going to even uh, define for you what truth is. However, I am going to allow who I believe to be the truth to provide us uh, uh, a couple of ways of defining truth. Amen. Uh, whether you accept Christ or not, I, that, that's not my argument today, I, 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 but because I accept him. I want to use him to provide all of us a, a way to define truth or a couple of defining definitions or ways of defining or ascertaining what is the truth. And particularly as we look at this virus called COVID-19. And I want to do that this morning. In fact, Lord, lead me to do that because of some of the information that's out there. Amen. According to a Kaiser Foundation article based upon the latest CDC data on COVID-19, white people account for the largest segment of unvaccinated persons at 60%. Yet, blacks and Hispanics are less likely than their white counterparts to receive the vaccination leaving them at a higher risk of infection, illness, and death. Black folk by population has the lowest vaccination percentage at 47%. Now, what's, 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 what's challenging about this is, is that we all know from the jump, COVID-19 disproportionately affected the black community greater than any other people group in America. And that was with the initial COVID-19 strand. But we learned this week from Dr. Jonathan, amen, I thank God for her and her presentation, uh, that, 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 that currently in America, 99.9% .9 of active COVID cases is not the initial strand. It's the more deadly contagious strand called the Delta variant, which means that leaves, amen, the black community, amen, uh, at a higher clip of being infected and affected by COVID-19. Now, that's important because that has uh, socioeconomic effects, but it also has, amen, some uh, political effects. Economically, it's challenging because uh, you may want to know this, I mean, because you may know somebody this morning who's still not vaccinated. You may know somebody, who, amen, who's still dealing with saying, amen, this ain't real or whatever. But let me, let, 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 let me say this. Based upon data, the average cost of being in the hospital one day due to COVID 
is $24,000 a day. A day. And you're going to be in there more than likely for more than a day. And unless your bank account is fat like some other folks, and your insurance is better than most folks, you're going to have a major debt when the vaccine is free. <laughs> I'm going to argue today. I'm, I, I need to do this. Amen. Uh, African Americans are 2.8 times more likely to be hospitalized than Caucasians. African Americans are two times more likely to die than our white counterparts. Here's the one that got me. African American children are two times more likely to be hospitalized and almost three times more likely to die. Amen. That means that this thing is not just a matter of opinion or preference. It's literally a matter of life and death. Not only that, it does not just impact us, but it also impacts our children, who at a larger clip is already behind when it comes to the achievement gap. So how much more of an impact will it have on our children if they are missing school because of being infected by COVID-19? And that's just what's happening in the here and the now, but what happens five years down the line? When June bug still has educational problems. Brothers and my sisters, and it bothers me because we have certain individuals, amen, uh, not putting on front street, but it is what it is because he's the front, he's a front face figure and all this right now with some things, Kyrie Irving, who does, who has done major work in blessing the black community with projects and monies and etc. But his stance on this issue may be impacting the black community at a larger rate in a negative manner than all the money he's put by way of a positive manner. But it also rounds about what really is the truth when it comes to COVID and its controversies. Like I said, I don't want to argue what the truth is. I just want to provide for you, according to the text, some defining principles that we can use to ascertain as to what is and what is not the truth. Because we got to ascertain the truth because truth is what we base our decisions off of. Truth helps us define what's right and what's wrong. And how do you define truth when everybody's saying, my right is right? Somebody's right <laughs> got to be wrong. Walk with me into our text this morning. We find Jesus, your Lord and my Savior. He's having a part of that after-dinner conversation on his way to his date with Calvary. He has just broken bread and gave it to the disciples, instituted the Lord's Supper, and Judas has stepped out to betray the Christ, setting the crucifixion scene in motion. And now Jesus is having conversations with the disciples because he's told them that he has to leave, but they can't come with him right now, and they're troubled about him leaving. And Jesus says, don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Y'all know how it goes. Know how it goes. And he said, he said and, and, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And, and, and I will come again and receive you and take you to the place that I'm preparing for you. And, and Thomas, the doubter, has some doubts as to what Jesus is talking about. And Jesus dispels his doubt by saying, Thomas, if you have some doubts about the way or how to get there, I am the way. I am the truth, 
and I am the life. Jesus does something with truth. In verse number six, that provides us again in this broad, in this narrow context of the conversation in chapter 14 and the broader context of chapter 14 as to what we can use as at least two ways to define or ascertain the truth. Number one, look in the text. Notice the truth is in the middle of way in life. Now notice the word truth. Jesus said truth. Truth literally is in the midst of way in life. Truth actually acts as a bridge between way and life. In other words, I can argue this morning that if truth is truth, then truth will always point the way to life. Truth points the way to life. Yeah, it does. Because that's what Jesus, the truth, is doing in the text. He's pointing them the way to life. What are you saying, brother? Because remember now that there's a question about where are you going? He said, I'm going to my father. And my father is in heaven. And so since I'm going to my father in heaven, I'm going to the place of life. The word way literally in the text is, in its literal use, is road or highway. Jesus is literally saying, I am the highway to heaven. You pass from earth to heaven to pass from the place of dead and dying to the place of the living. And watch now, well, I contend this morning that whatever works by way of a heavenly principle ought to guide our earthly practices. Come here, Jesus, that model prayer. We pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where on earth as it is already being done in heaven. So whatever goes on in heaven by way of principle, I think it ought to guide us by earthly practice. Literally in our text, Jesus says, I'm the highway to heaven. I am the highway to life. Anybody happy about heaven today? And I, literally, I mean, really, are you happy about heaven today? The reason why I ask that is because I read something about heaven in Revelation chapter 21, verse number 4. I read that heaven is this place where there is no more death. Heaven is a place where there's no more death, which means there's no more things that causes death. That's why I said there'll be no more sorrow, no more crying, and no more pain. Here is truth. Pointing the way to life. Truth, by definition in the text and practice according to Christ, always promotes life, not death. Because Jesus came to give us life, not death. And you can begin to define some, whether something's true or not based upon just doing, doing a, do, do a life and death test. It's what's being promoted, promoting a way to life or death. Because literally truth in the text tells Thomas, I am the highway to eternal life. 
I, I am the road you take to get to the place where there is no more death. Truth points the way to life because truth promotes life, not death. Now, if that's true, then the opposite is also true, which is whatever is not truth is a lie. And biblically, lies and deception promotes death, not life. Y'all remember that creation narrative, don't you? But God created humanity, put him in a garden, eat of every tree of the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He was giving them truth so they could maintain life. <laughs> but what happened in Genesis chapter number three? Lie and deception showed up. When lie and deception showed up, life resulted in death. I told you, the Bible would guide every <laughs> conversation. Literally, when lie and deception is introduced to life, it didn't help life, it took life. And anything that takes life is not the truth. Amen. Number one, text says, won't be no hooping today probably, amen. I don't hoop no way, amen, but... Uh, this this is this is this is this is a, this is a very important thing. We we we're using Amen. Bible and Jesus to help guide real life conversations. Truth points the way to life. Truth promotes life. Not death, lies and deception promotes death, not life. You can begin to define what's truth based upon one, whether it points the way to life. Secondly, text, truth paves the way for life. Amen. Truth paves the way for life. Jesus, uh, again, literally, uh, highway, way, highway in the way, highway in the text, literally is the uh, is the road we travel, the highway to get from one place to another. It's the road we travel on to get from point A. Point B. Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've I've traveled on some gravel roads. Amen. But I I I I much rather prefer to travel on a paved road. Have I got a witness? <laughs> My I, I can roll. Faster on a paved road. Meaning I can travel easier on a paved road. So that gives us the concept of paving the way for something. That which paves the way makes something easier to do. Now, way in the text, not only is it, is it a literal, but figuratively in the text, way points to a course of action or way of life. Jesus says, follow my course of action. 
follow my way of life, mimic me, and you can get to where I'm going. But it's, it's, it's the mimic me part that I want to hang out with. Got a few more minutes. Because Jesus says, whatever my actions are, ought to be your actions. Whatever I do, you ought to do. Whatever the principle behind my ethos ought to be the guiding principle for yours. You with me? Follow my way, and you'll get to where I'm going. He says, now, 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 one of the things about my way, remember now, whatever, whatever paving the way means making it easier for something to happen. Literally, Jesus says, part of the way I live my life, I live my life to make life easier for others to travel. I came to be a blesser in life. So I came that life might be made a little bit more easier to travel. Jesus says, I, 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 matter of fact, that's the idea of paving the way anyway. I mean, paving the way really, it, it really is used in, in areas of, of advancement, progress that's being made, in particular in the area of technology or medicine, because when something paves the way for something else, that means it makes it easier for something else to be done. Amen. And I got to spell real quick this rumor that, 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 this, that, that the vaccination is new. No, it really ain't. Amen. Amen. Truth of the matter is, is that they were able to turn around a vaccine one month after they discovered the vaccine because there were some other developments that had already paved the way. Because of other developments and vaccinations, according to the, uh, the Ebola vaccination and other vaccination research, amen, they had already done the work. So that when the strand, when it was discovered, they were able to move quickly because some works had already paved the way. Uh, Jesus says, that's what I do. I pave the way. I prepare a way for things to be done better or easier than what they were before I showed up. What do you mean? John chapter number five. There's this man laying at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus showed up for a feast in Jerusalem. He gets down there. He sees this man that's been sick of his infirmity for 38 years laying at the pool. And watch what the pool does. Once a year, the lame sick would lay down near this pool. And once a year, God would dispatch an angel. The angel would come down and stir the water. And whoever was the first to get into the water would be healed of their sickness. Healed now. Healed, healed of their sickness. Once he, every so often, I said once a year, but we think traditionally you say once a year, but it says periodically, amen. Uh, the, and the, the Lord would send healing to the water by sending names and he would stir the water. Whoever got in first got healed. Jesus showed up one day, saw the man there and said, man, would you be made well? King James, I think, says whole. Whole means well. Do you want to get rid of your medical condition? Man said, I, I would love to get rid of it, but I don't have anybody to help me out. I, I, don't, I don't have any, any, any assistance to get into the pool to get the healing that I need. Jesus said, well, that's why I stopped by today. I stop by that you might be made well. Take up your bed and walk. Later on, Jesus saw that man walking and asked who did it. He said, I don't know, but all I know is I've been, I, I've been messed up for 38 years. And finally, Jesus stopped by and made me well. And then they want to know, uh, where is it? They finally ran into him. Why, listen to this now. Ran into him. And when they ran into him, and, and they want to know, Jesus, what were you doing? He said, I just was doing what I saw my father do. I watched how periodically my father would send healing to this water. So since I came by the water there and saw this man need healing, I just did what my father had already been doing. My father paved the way for me to do what I'm doing right now. That's what Jesus does. Jesus comes along and he heals the man. Look, he said, he said, I'm only working the works that my father does. 
Therein lies the point. Jesus' works always makes life better for somebody else. If your work and what you're doing does not make life better for somebody else, it very well might not be the truth. Because God specializes in making life what? Better. Jesus, in the broader context of John chapter number 14, he's moving to make life better to travel. He's coming that we might be delivered from sin, but then he would dispatch the, call the Father, dispatch the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost will come and live with us to now give us power to live above sin. He came to save us from sin, but he also gives us power to live above sin. I don't know about you, my life ain't always easy, but it's been easier since Jesus (laughs) came into my life. So just by way of principle, Jesus, as truth, makes life easier to travel. I got to get out of here. Last point about paving the way for life. Literally, truth makes personal sacrifices so others can have life. Let me say one more time. Truth makes personal sacrifices so others can have Life. What is truth on his way to do in John 14? He's on his way (laughs) to make a personal sacrifice so others could have life. Without Jesus' personal sacrifice, There is no life. Have I got a witness? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Only when you get the gift of eternal life, somebody had to make a personal sacrifice. I hear people say, my right for this, my right for that. Maybe you're right, whatever, but if we're going to use the word of God, And Jesus, as a definer of what's truth, then Jesus challenges us that says every now and then so others can live, you have to make personal sacrifices. Have I got a witness? If Jesus could take a a, a, a figurative shot knowing he had proof he was going to die, then why wouldn't we make the personal sacrifice to take a shot that has no proof that you're going to die? But proof is you and others will live. Y'all don't like me this morning. Uh, Jesus did figuratively take a shot. They didn't stick a syringe in his shoulder, but they stuck spikes in his hands. He didn't mask up, but they did derobe him. He went through all of that as a personal sacrifice. Have I got a witness? I mean, really. (laughs) Have I got a witness? (laughs) He he, he took a painful experience and he didn't have to do it. At any time, he could have 
come down of the cross. It was his personal sacrifice that he personally gave of himself that we might have life beyond life on this earth. Remember I told you whatever is a heavenly principle or the God earthly practices. Jesus literally sacrificed so that others could have life. What is the truth? According to Jesus' truth in the text, you can begin to define truth by asking the life-death question. Does that truth claim lead to life or death? Does it pave the way for life? If it makes life harder, if it stampedes progress, according to the text, can't be the truth. Because truth points to life and paves the way for life. Join me Tuesday. The controversies of COVID, a biblical perspective. Amen. The invitation now is being extended. He who came and gave his life that we might have life is only a life that you can get if you accept the truth about Jesus Christ. He is our Savior. He is our Redeemer. He is the highway to heaven. If you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, we extend the invitation to you to come give him your life. And maybe you're not virtual and you have not made that decision today. Give your life to Jesus. He'll guide you in every area of your life. You may contact us, 859-252-7191. You may reach us, amen, by a Facebook Messenger or by contacting us via our uh, FABC website. Is there one in the audience or is there one virtually? Is there, is there one? Is there one?
say amen. To God be the glory, amen. We, we have one who has come to unite with us today, amen. To God be the glory, amen. I think we're all know but come on, Miss Trinity. Come on, stand up, dear heart. Amen. I got this right here. Amen. I take care of this. I asked her, I said, you coming to join church? She said, yes. I said, okay, come on. All right. So, you're coming to give your life to Christ. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So, that means there are some things that you believe about Christ. You believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe Jesus rose from the grave? Yes. And do you believe one day Jesus is coming to take all of us that gave our lives to him to live with him eternally? Yes. Amen. Anything else you want to tell us that's good? You good? Amen. All right. You all have heard Miss Trinity's confession of faith and her desire to unite with us. Amen. She, she'll be coming to us as a candidate for baptism. Amen. We will take her through new members class. Upon completion of new members class, we will prepare her for her baptism. We have one scheduled for no, the second Sunday in November, so we'll try and we'll get her ready and get her situated, and we'll be ready to take her into the water uh, on the second Sunday in November. Well, you've heard her desire to unite with us. What is our pleasure? Amen. Been motion. Amen. I got a second back there. Amen. It's been motion and second. We receive our sister as a candidate for baptism. All those in favor say amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. We got another one to join. Amen. To God be the glory. Proud of you, my dear. Love you. Proud of you. Good. You go back. Amen. Let the church say amen. Again. Thank God for all of you here today. We pray that you've had a blessed and a wonderful day. Amen. To God be the glory. We pray something that has been said to encourage you. Amen. Now, over the next several weeks, we're just going to try to just, just to share some information that may help to frame discussions. I think all of us may know somebody within our family or whatever who still has some hesitancy about some things. Hopefully, these things are what we'll be sharing uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to inform conversations to help people to do what they need to do that's going to bless them and their families as in our community as a whole. Amen. So we thank God for being a, a God who gives us what we need in Jesus, and Jesus still is the way. He is still the truth, and he most definitely is the life. Amen. So we thank God for Jesus being all of that and then some. To God be the glory again, 6 o'clock, amen, doing a Facebook Live, 6 o'clock Tuesday, 7 o'clock, you may join our Facebook online group, and we'll go to our online group at 7 o'clock for further discussion and questions if you have them uh, after our Bible study period. So God bless you out there in virtual land as well. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come on, let's see the benediction today. God, we thank you for sending us Jesus who truly is the highway to eternal life, and he is the way in which we ought to live our lives. So bless us as we strive to be the best that we can, representing that man named Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forever. Let all of God's children say amen. Amen and amen. Remember, we love you, love you, and God loves you too. Have a blessed week. <laughs>